Hello there everyone, and welcome back to Empire Total War with the Imperial Destroyer mod. So, I'm not really finished with this mod just yet. I want to do some battles for my battle series. And before we go ahead and start talking about the battle and so forth, I want to just go ahead and explain how the battle series work. And it's not trying, the important thing is it's not trying to recreate the outcome or what happened during the battle. What we're doing is we're taking a battlefield that is close enough to the actual battlefield. We're taking the armies as close enough as the battle rosters or the game would allow us. And then we just fight the battle out. Normally it sort of goes similar to what actually happened. But there has been some upsets uh, in some of my battle series videos where mostly actually in my American Civil War one where either the Confederates have won a battle that they lost or vice versa but most of the time it goes down the historical line but it's not intended to go down that way um, but usually it does because of sort of the troops and so forth anyways what battle are we looking at today we're looking at the last battle fought on Great British Soil, which is the battle at Culloden Moor in uh, 1746. So what we have before us is we have a British army under the Duke of Cumberland versus um, Bonnie Prince Charles and his Scottish army, which is across the field right over there. The armies in terms of numbers were about equal in size probably um, a little uh, according to Wikipedia is about a thousand men in favor of the British um, but I think it would have been quite hard to estimate the troops on the Scottish side so we don't really know um, how um, how I, I don't think it's uh, that easy to tell the Scot on the Scottish side just because of uh, certain thing that happened in the battle and also just the administration and so forth. Let's go through um, Well, w what we're fighting on is Culloden Moor and There isn't really a moor in the game. So there isn't like soggy ground that will slow down a highland charge But I thought this looked this battlefield looks kind of Scottish. So I guess we'll go with that and it's a f reasonably flat and open area um for my army, uh, since I'm playing as the British, uh, what I have is mostly British line infantry, and then I have a few grenadiers. I want actually two grenadiers, one on each side of the line. So we've got one here on my left side, and then we've got one on the right, and then mostly is the standard British line infantry. But because on the field of battle it actually was quite a few lowland regiments. Uh, on the British side, so we have um, uh, set them up as well on the right side of the field. So I've got, I think it's four units, with the Black Watch being the only name unit that I could find that actually took part in the battle. And then further off here, we have two Grenadiers, or one Grenadier. Um, however, we've got two Dragoons on my far right. So the Dragoons would have actually been deployed on the left, I think, because there was a wall and at some point during the, the as the Scottish advanced, the British were able to stand along the wall, basically firing at the Scottish from two directions, causing devastating amount of damage. And then we do have a normal British uh, regiment of horse, the Duke of Cumberland, situated in the middle of our army. We've got two batteries against the Scottish one. Um, technically, both of them, we should have about the same similar amount of guns. However, because of the logistics and stuff, the Scottish was never able to uh, lay down any effective artillery fire on the British compared to the more prepared uh, British artillery bombardment, which eventually sort of forced the Scottish to attack. So if we go over and look at the Scottish army, uh, we've got a single regiment of horse on this side, 
then we've got two other horse units on this side. And then right over here we can see levies, which is a which is what I think most of us would think of when we think of Culloden Moor. A lot of Scotsmen Highlanders with sword and shield and axe and so forth charging across a field. But um, when you actually look at it, there was a lot there was um, a lot of uh, actually musket carrying infantry. But we have quite a few levies and Scottish Highlands clansmen um, in the Scottish army here. But there are also quite a few musket carrying regiments. One of which is the Royal Escogais. I'm not entirely sure. I'm not going to try. Frenchmen are going to laugh at me for saying this. Um, Ecois. I, I don't know. I don't know why I tried a second time. It's basically Scottish in the service of the French king. Um, then we've got some Highlanders with muskets. We've got line infantry. Some more Scottish men with muskets. And that goes uh, to two more units over there. Then behind, we've got some lowland infantry uh, fighting for, for the Scottish cause. Then we have an English regiment, and there was actually an English regiment that switched side, um, quite surprisingly. So they're depicted here in the battle. And then we also have the Irish. So an Irish regiment is part here. And we've got Bonnie Prince Charles, the single battery the Scottish has brought, more clansmen, and then up here furthest on the Scottish left, we've got uh, two units of uh, Scottish uh, cavalry, both of which I'm not entirely sure what's special about these pit ligos or whatever you want to call them, and uh, sounds like uh, sort of hobbit names bag ops I'm not entirely sure what's the deal with these guys I didn't actually research that but at this point my enemy was uh, focused on something else and so I was able to ride up with my dragoons and we're gonna see what happens at close range volley the Scottish are about to return fire it's just that I am able to return or I am able to fire beforehand. So right off the bat here, I'm able to win the cavalry fight on the right, which is a big, um, is going to cause a big upset for the Scots. And the Scots are about to march now into quite whittling fire by uh, my British regiments and my Highland regiments. So this is quite similar to what happened in the actual battle is basically the Scottish the original plan was for the Scottish to force the British to come to them and then they would use the Highland charge to break the uh, British but because they couldn't force them to come over because the British had artillery superiority and they could just sit there and mow cannon shot after cannon shot into them so at this point uh, we can see here I'm actually holding fire with my grenadiers to wait until the very end. It didn't work so well for the Grenadiers. It worked a lot better for the Highland Regiment, uh, the my Black Watch Regiment, which completely massacred um, these guys. And I think they actually get shot by the Highland Infantry over here. But there's gonna be a bit of a melee fight here in between the Scottish Levies and the Grenadiers, but we know who's gonna win this fight in the long run and since the uh, Scottish cavalry was taken out um, they can't really support we have the Irish here they could have moved up but they can't really because I've got cavalry on that side um, and now the fight is going down all along the line we've got two other charges going in here uh, Highland clansmen charging forwards in this case I haven't been able to hold fire and wait for a close volley so uh, they're gonna take a quite a bit of casualties though running up to uh, to our line infantry and one of this clan's highland men is not even gonna reach 
uh, the line, so they're going to retreat already. But uh, same actually for this one, he's retreating quite early. And uh, the British line infantry, even though suffering heavy casualties, down to 88 men, hold the line and is able to see the Scottish off. And so now it's down to a musket fight back and forth. But the Scottish commander has at this point realized, you know what, this is not going to work. The Highland Chargers has failed and we're losing the musket fight. Obviously, um, the musket fight isn't going to work in favor of the Scottish, um, just given the fact that they don't have as many muskets to put down against uh, us as uh, we can put down against them. I'm actually, I lost quite a few troops here on the battery, so I'm not entirely sure if that's why we did so well. Uh, that, uh, I think this was some friendly fire here, it l just given the number of dead British here. But I think that might have been why these guys right here, close to the artillery, lost so few men, because the regiments on the other side the Highland regiments on this side was actually focusing in on the artillery rather than uh, firing on my men. So here, right off the start, when I played this battle, I sort of thought, oh, I sort of miscalculated completely how uh, sort of how unbalanced this battle was set up because in 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 number of troops, the Scottish actually outnumber me, but I mean after this. I've basically cut the Scottish in half, it seemed, or more so, and uh, I still have, I mean, this Grenadier Regiment hasn't lost a single man, neither has this one, and I have, let's see, like three or four, actually uh, five, frontline regiments that hasn't lost a single soldier. Uh, I messed up, however. I guess uh, that was part of why uh, they weren't able to send everyone forwards in the beginning here. Um, oh, here goes the uh, the Scottish in the French King's service. They're retreating. Only a few survived. So what we didn't see while all the battle was taking place. Right now, actually, we can go ahead and take a look here. Uh, we've got my Grenadiers. They're fighting against uh, some Highland guerrilla men setting up here in this forested area but I'm about to uh, swipe them out with the goons coming in close firing volley down through the ranks here completely destroying them so what happened over there anyways is I sent in my cavalry against their cavalry we ended up in the forest and I believe that he sent two like clansmen unit to absolutely uh, sort of wrap around and destroy that and I can't remember why I didn't really I focused somewhere else and so I lost that fight there however he wasn't really able to send the cavalry unit around to support the fight on that side I mean absolute carnage here uh, Imperial destroyer with the improved musket accuracy you know completely causes such havoc on close range but at this point, I'm very confident in victory, and I've just told the men to do a blanket advance towards the enemy. So we see the Scottish moving forwards here. Um, it's going to take a while for the uh, Grenadiers to turn up. They actually lost quite a bit of men in this fight right here. I guess the, uh, the cover of the forest soaked up a lot of bullets. The Scottish are in full retreat up towards uh, the hills in the back here. In the actual battle uh, there was the town of uh, let me see, was it Inverness? There was some really important town that really why they stopped to have the fight there was because they, if they lost that town they lost like a big supply hub uh, for their forces so they had really had to uh, fight there in in this sort of area uh, but they didn't really actually want to fight at Culloden more it was just like most of the men uh, had, uh, ended up being there so it's like 
Okay, well, I guess we're gonna have to make a stand here. It's not like the British gonna let us find the better ground at this point. Um, so, I'm advancing towards up here. So, it really would have been a town. And there would have been walls and stuff. So, um, at certain points during the battle, uh, uh, as the battle was lost for the Scottish, as the British troops pushed forwards, um, they sort of ran into... I think there was a wall close to the town and basically they couldn't go over it and they sort of got trapped and some melee nastiness turned up there um, but yeah so at this point I mean the Scottish are setting up in the forest and stuff and I had sent forwards my men in a blanket advance but the thing is you don't want to advance too quickly in, in, an, uh, in pursuing a fleeing enemy because that can cause some, that can end up in some terrible counter charges by the enemy. And especially since we've got Scottish clansmen and stuff. Still got these Highlanders roaming here. So with the, the additional, uh, the additional cover of the forest, our volleys are not going to be as effective against them. And they can close range pretty rapidly and uh, kill us, so... We don't want that, do we? So I'm, I'm taking precaution here to set up the lines, preparing. So the idea here is for the British lines on this side with the Grenadiers out in the on the furthest left is to move through here. While the Highlanders are supposed to move here towards um, this area, attacking this. So at this point he actually moves down. Probably would have been better for him to actually stay in the forest. And wait for me to attack. Um, but I guess he saw m me bringing up my artillery. So he figured he would go ahead and meet me on the field here. He's going to have some units in the forest later as well. Uh, and I want to take a careful, especially take a careful advance through here. So I'm advancing my Scottish troops. Since I, I number him quite a bit with the amount of troops I have. I'm going to move forwards. I basically take the, his first volley and then move closer and hoping to sort of cause devastating morale damage sort of a bit closer to what I did with my Swedish troops um, and we do unnumber him so I'm able to lay down quite a bit uh, more superior fire down upon his troops he still has his Irish here holding his left flank you always want to put the best troops towards the flank. Uh, we've got line infantry here. It's completely been murdered and is falling back. The lowlanders still holding, still fighting there. Uh, we've got the English regiment still on the field fighting. And we've got a Highlander over here. And so here happens what I didn't really want to happen. The Highlanders have managed to sneak through the forest and have ambushed this British Line Infantry Regiment and uh, it turns into quite the nasty melee here in the forest which uh, isn't very nice at all uh, we've got the officer right there trying to do his best but his regiment is not doing well he's outnumbered against a lot of these angry Scotsmen since they've just lost a big part of the battle they want to um, avenge their friends um, I'm sending in a support regiment of 76 men to come in here and try and cut them down the thing is though just as I send them in I think that the no the other regiment is actually holding but uh, I'd probably d have done better Firing into the melee, sacrificing the one regiment that was stationed there, which is now giving way, and leaving this one. So I'm basically losing two small ones, where I probably should have just left one of my regiments um, to fight while the other one fired into the melee. At the same time, the uh, Highlanders over here have won. Pushing up now towards the forest and trying to fight the enemy over there. And uh, we had, I think he sent his general 
or maybe the remainder of his cavalry unit it looks like and uh, managed to get in on the back on the highlanders uh, not the highlanders my grenadiers so they took quite a beating um, and they're having a they as I remember they having a very hard time pushing through this forest a lot of the bullets is soaking up and obviously of course we still have the Highlanders which have dealt with these two regiments and is now turning in on the flank on this one and threatening the entire advance here. I forced the put the Grenadiers into square uh, because they were actually breaking at this point. They had lost so many men due to the fire of the Highlanders and then with the enemy um, the enemy Highland charge going in here there was a risk of them breaking so I needed the morale support of forming into a square uh, however at this point I'm not gonna make the same mistake so I put this small grenadier unit to fire into it apparently I did the same mistake because I'm charging in the grenadiers oh, but for some reason they're going they're going I mean sometimes the highland I mean the charges in Empire are really wonky, but finally the Grenadiers find where the enemy is and he sends in his general to help out and fight this fight over here and I've also sent in the Grenadiers that was formed in the square they managed to gain enough uh, morale and this was enough to break the Highlanders at this point they've just suffered too many casualties and they're falling back so I'm gonna regroup these guys and at the same time as I'm doing that because we've cut this stack these guys down I've been able to send um, these two British line infantry regiments off to start firing in on the two regiments that are holding here um, I'm gonna pull back with these guys set up and then advance again surprised that the the enemy in the forest is holding um, surprisingly well and given that they have so few men left I'm surprised that they're still standing but I guess fighting for Bonnie Prince Charles is uh, really enough finally the Irish infantry was routed leaving only 38 lowlanders there conducting a skirmish and here we go Bonnie Prince Charles charged straight into a British line infantry and fights Obviously, that did not happen in the actual battle. Bonnie Prince Charles is... I mean, it's its uh, its uh, allegedly he had said every man for himself and then he rode off basically all the way back to France. Well, he probably didn't... R you can't ride all the way to France because they, they didn't have a tunnel back then, but he rode onto a ship and then off to France. And then no one ever saw him again. Saw him again. So he kind of left his army there. And at this point, basically there's no Scottish left. I wasn't able to really, because the battle went pretty quickly here, I wasn't really able to preference the historical battle that much uh, compared to, say, the the other historical battle I posted, uh, Battle of Oravaris. But obviously since the casualties rate is much higher in this mod, um, I'm not going to have as much time to preference the historical battle. Um, but I advised you guys to, as uh, as I as the series is really about, you know, go out and find find it for yourself. Maybe what I should do with these is uh, post the troops in a way, like post what troops I'm using and so forth, that you can go ahead and maybe do it yourself with your friends uh, play the battle or uh, you know improve on it you know s research further into the battle order realizing oh this maybe I should have this men this ratio of units maybe this should be extra and so forth um, so the thing was when I actually set this battle up I set it up in custom battle and then each unit is 320 men and so I um, kind of was a little bit disappointed when I realized in multiplayer I wasn't able to do the 320 men line. Instead it was the 160. 
So the troop numbers fell um, quite drastically because basically I had planned to have 4,000 British against about 5,000 Scottish men. And that fell, unfortunately, during the, ba during the switch over to multiplayer. Um, but we can see I suffered quite a bit of losses. Only about 900 men remaining in my army at the end of this. Um, compared to um, the Scottish. Then obviously the Scottish did a lot worse. They had about 500 men left. But if you compare this to the actual battle statistics, I mean, the British didn't lose that many at all compared to what the Jacobites would have lost. Uh, highest killer during the match was actually the Highlanders on my side, so the Black Watch, and then British Line Infantry Grandiers. Cannons didn't do very well at all, but we already knew that from the campaign. Um, if I remember correctly, he had, I think it was a levy unit he had, or a Scottish clan man, clans unit that killed like 200 or something. So that was the highest killer on his side, so it really was the, I guess the units in the forest here, that did the most work on his side, or did the most favorable work. Um, we can see a lot of dead here. Um, but yeah. Um, as I always say, hopefully you guys enjoyed this battle, and hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye!